The Lord be with you. Good morning and welcome on this ninth Sunday of Trinity. Today we pick up exactly where we left off last week in the Gospel of St Matthew. Just get my Bible. And we're still in chapter 14 and we're reading from verse 22. Immediately after feeding the crowd with the five loaves and two fish, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but by this time the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking towards them on the lake. But when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost, and they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water and came towards Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, you of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, as I said, we pick up precisely where we left off last week. Jesus was quite tired at the start of last week, if you remember, and he had just had some horrible emotional news. His death of his cousin. And yet the crowds were there and he had compassion on them, a deep compassion for them, and he fed them. And now the crowds have gone and he sent his disciples away because he really does need that time to rest, to pray, to be with his heavenly father. And then, when he is himself again, and he clearly is himself in a most amazing way, there is a storm blown up on the Sea of Galilee, and the disciples are all there in the boat, and Jesus walks towards them, and they're scared, because they think it's a ghost. And yet, it is not. It is Jesus. Now, some of you may have noticed that behind me at this station where I like to lead worship and pray, I have some icons. There's an icon of Mary um, with Jesus um, being Eucharistic and distributing him. There's an icon of Mary Magdalene and other icons here too. Icons are holy pictures and when I was at college my College chaplain had an icon of the story we've just heard today. He had a picture of Jesus walking on the water towards a boat full of disciples and the disciples were all doing different things. There was Peter sort of getting out of the boat and walking or sinking and then there was a disciple in the front of the boat looking to see what was going on. There was one at the back sort of cowering down. There was one looking up at the sky, and quite often his opening shot for a meeting was, which one of those are you today? Well, it was a good conversation starter, but to me, he was using this story we've heard, this miracle, as a parable. And it's not a parable, it's a miracle. Um, a little bit of biblical history 
Uh, many of you will know that the Gospel of Mark was written first, soonest after Jesus' death, and Matthew and Luke were both written then at about the same time, and they both had the Gospel of Mark to read, so quite often they're the same, all three of them, even word for word. The Gospel of John was written at, in a different place by a different person, and he almost certainly didn't have access to any of the other three parchments when he was writing his account of Jesus. I say this because, having said that Matthew, Mark and Luke quite often have overlaps, it means that the Gospel of John is much more likely to be different, and indeed it is in many ways. For example, uh, Jesus in John's Gospel rarely tells a parable. But this story that we've heard today about Jesus' life is very significant because it appears in Mark and in Matthew, which we've heard, and also in John. And not only that, but in all three Gospels, it happens immediately after the feeding of the 5,000. The feeding of the 5,000 appears in all four Gospels. This makes it incredibly significant. Different people, different disciples remember different things about Jesus. And so things that all four of them remember are really important. And so something amazing obviously happened. And as many of you know, again, I'm a scientist by training and I spent many years as an atheist. And people often say, but do you believe? Do you believe in miracles? And all I can say is, for this one, something extraordinary happened. Now, if someone was to come to me, another scientist, and say, oh, but it was just a mirage, it was done like this, here's how it could be done, I'm not sure it would make that much difference. Because the important thing is that something amazing happened. And there is learning in that. And the disciples recognise Jesus as God in that. And actually, we too can recognise Jesus as God in all of this. Going back to what my college chaplain used to say, I think it is worth thinking about, though, where we are as his disciples. Are we the one looking enthusiastically at Jesus? Where are you today? Are you the one sinking in the water like Peter when he lost confidence? Are you stepping boldly out of the boat? Are you perhaps taking a bold new step into something new? Or are you sitting exhaustedly in the back of the boat thinking, I just want to get to shore, I've had enough now. Jesus is walking towards all of us in all of those places. And he will come to us and he will calm our storms. So whatever is happening in our lives, we can give all that to Jesus today. He will take it. He will calm the storm. He will be there with us and for us as God. Amen. And so we come to our prayers. It took me a moment to find the prayer list there. But Lord, we come before you in the storms of our life or in the confidence of our life, whether we are stepping out of the boat in faith or whether we are just in need of your comfort and healing presence. And we offer you ourselves this day. And we pray, Lord, for those who are in particular need of your presence today. We pray for Anne Armstrong, Mary Tragheim, Laura Peachy, Alexander, Alex, Mark Redding, John Bilk, Ruth and Sheila Burston, Michael Smith, Sandra Marshall and her family, Maylene Smith, Stephen Halliday, the Parkinson family, Mary Farrier, 
Jean Winch, Gillian Watkins, Carol Black and Carol Kitchener. Lord, be with all these people. Amen. And Lord, we offer you all those we have loved and lost and who have gone before us to be with you. We remember them before you this day. And we look forward to the great day when we will be reunited with them in you. We pray that you will give us confidence and the courage and strength to look forward to that day. Amen. And so we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So we finish our short service this morning by praying for God's blessing upon us and among us. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with you and all whom you love, living or departed, now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>